Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott, and today we're going to return to the world of Anthony Norvell. I found a beautiful chapter that really links to other stuff I've talked about on the podcast about moving into fourth density. Anthony Norvell was a wonderful teacher of new thought subjects from the 50s and 60s that lectured in Carnegie Hall and had a unique way of writing that was vibrant and interesting and it always touches me when I read his books. Certainly some of his books were a little bit crazy, but overall the two episodes we've done so far have been very good. Check those out and I will put a link to those. But this chapter I found from the books Metaphysics, New Dimensions of the Mind. And there's a chapter on the metaphysical fourth dimensional power source. We've been talking about this for a long time, for 60 years, that there is a fourth dimensional power source. This density always existed. We can access this density. One of the things that we talk about in the law of one is the idea that there's a group consciousness that starts to form. One of the ways this happens is you start to remember authors and famous people in history and you start to actually experience these things this comes from a contact of fourth dimensional light understanding which has the akashic record right there so i found this chapter very interesting and i thought that you would enjoy it norvell begins by saying in metaphysics we learn that there is a fourth dimensional power plane that can give one super normal powers of the mind and body. It is in this fourth dimension of mind and spirit that man is able to perform astounding miracles. All the great mystics and teachers of the past have known of this fourth dimension, and by tapping the vast storehouse of power that resides therein, there have been able to rise above the limitations of time and space and matter and achieve miraculous results. The term metaphysics was coined by Andronicus of Rhodes, who edited Aristotle's philosophical works. That section of the philosophy that dealt with matters above and beyond the physical and material planes of existence, he called metaphysics, from two Greek words meta and physica, which means literally that which is above and beyond the realm of the physical. Miracle Response Centers of the Brain Within your human brain, there are miracle response centers, which operate on a higher frequency or wavelength than the ordinary everyday centers which regulate your body functions, such as digestion, breathing, circulations of the blood, repairing the body, and the other automatic functions. The all-knowing intelligence which man calls God has put into his universe everything that man needs for his existence. Let us see how this power works in nature. A beaver knows instinctively how to cut down trees, chop them into small sections, and then build a dam across a stream. This knowledge is inborn in the beaver. Scientists took two beavers into their home for observation. They left them alone while they went out for the evening. When the scientists returned, the beavers had carefully cut the legs off the wood tables and chairs and dragged the pieces of wood to a corner where they constructed a dam for an imaginary stream. A beaver knows no other way of life than to build dams and he will construct them wherever he is. A spider will spin a geometric web that is perfect in design, and he knows how to sit in the center of that web and wait for his victim to fall into its tenuous strands. A hummingbird constructs an involved, elongated form of nest that hangs suspended from a tree branch where its young will be safe from predatory creatures. The bee knows how to take an essence from a flower and turn it into easily digestible honey for its young. And while it is busy taking essences from flower to flower, 
nature has made it earn its living by pollinating fruits and flowers for mankind's benefit. Truly a miracle of creative productivity. The maple seed is a two-winged pod, which this intelligence of the cosmic mind has created for a specific purpose. If the seed were to drop in the shade of the mother tree, it would never germinate and grow. This higher mind in nature has given the maple seed wings so that a vagrant breeze can carry it aloft and away from the tree to some fertile patch of soil where it can reproduce its own kind. The Three Planes of Consciousness There are three planes of consciousness which we shall now study. To fully develop your metaphysical power potentials, you must know how to reach the miracle response centers which you possess within your own consciousness. All the great men and women of history who achieved great things had this ability to release the power of the higher mind in creative activity. This is what distinguished them from ordinary mortals. There are three types of mind which are explained below. 1. The conscious mind. 2. The subconscious mind. 3. The cosmic mind. The conscious mind is the storehouse of the human memory. The subconscious mind is the storehouse of pre-conscious memory. The cosmic mind, which William James named the superconscious mind, is the storehouse of cosmic memory. Most people operate entirely on one plane of consciousness. The conscious mind, they read something and do not retain it in their memory. They see physical and material objects, but they do not fully comprehend what they see. They live a one-dimensional life that is purely physical and material. They lack sensitivity to the higher pulsations of the universe, and their lives are marked by poverty, unhappiness, and limitation. Such people settle for a job and a small income for the rest of their lives. They seldom broaden their horizons of consciousness by exploring the wonders of the universe. They complain about the lack of opportunities in the world. They grumble because their lives are drab and lack excitement and fulfillment. They do not realize that they create their own prisons in which they are confined for a lifetime. A prison or a palace. The story is told of a man who was sentenced to prison, and when he was put into his cell, he found another man sitting there, writing by the light of a candle. The newcomer looked about him at the incredible squalor and misery of the rat-infested cell and cried, What a miserable place! Surely I will die here! The man who was sitting at the low table writing and stopped and looked up, he asked, how long is your sentence? The other prisoner replied, Six months. Surely I cannot survive in this wretched cell. The other man smiled gently and said, I have been here twelve years. He returned to his writing of Pilgrim's Progress. The man was Bunyan, and he was busy creating his immortal book, which has given inspiration and courage to millions. One man, the new prisoner, was living in the consciousness of of limitation and saw only the wretched prison cell where he was to remain for six months. Bunyan was living in the fourth dimensional plane of the higher cosmic mind where he created his own world and rose above the limitations of his environment. You can create a prison or a palace in the unlimited dimension of your higher consciousness. When you once discover the secret for rising above the limitations of time and space, which all the great ones of history have known, you will be able to perform seeming miracles and transcend your environment and rise above your limitations. Helen Keller is a perfect example of someone who has been able to rise above the limitations of the third dimensional world and soar into the illimitable lofty realms 
of the cosmic plane of consciousness. Deaf, dumb and blind, this great woman has been able to achieve immortality and to benefit millions of handicapped persons with her example of courage, faith, hope and vision. Poverty, a state of consciousness. Most people do not realize that they literally imprison themselves because they live in a consciousness of limitation and barrenness. When they once learn how to release the power of the cosmic mind, with its unlimited power they can change their environment, become successful, and fulfill their every dream and desire. When the Kulaks or peasants of Russia were freed in the revolution, they inhabited the palaces of the czars and former rulers. They fed their horses in the rosewood pianos, chopped up the priceless antique furniture and built up fires on the white marble floors, and tore down the valuable hand-woven tapestries from the walls used for blankets for their horses. They now have the same environment that royalty had created and used but their limited consciousness caused them to make hovels of the magnificent palaces. Perhaps you have been limiting yourself in life by accepting the seeming limitations of material and physical conditions in which you exist. It is true that there are obstacles, problems, interferences in all human destiny. If life did not have these obstructions, man would not grow strong and learn how to rise above the limitations of life. Sometimes through misfortune or handicaps, we are literally pushed into the mainstream of life's turbulence, and we must either sink or swim. It is in such times that man must soar into the realm of the cosmic dimension and grow wings of the soul so he may rise above his limitations. Many of our greatest geniuses of history achieved imperishable fame through the fourth dimensional plane of metaphysics. Lincoln was uneducated and born in a log cabin, and through stimulating the miracle response centers of his higher mind, he achieved greatness. When Lincoln's brother wrote him from Illinois asking for a loan of several hundred dollars, Lincoln wrote back telling him that if he could not see opportunities all about him where he was, he would never achieve success and fulfillment. The state of Illinois became one of the richest in our union, proving what Lincoln told his brother, that opportunities were all about him if he could but have the vision to see them. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt rose to greatness despite a crippling attack of polio which kept him in a wheelchair for many years. Lord Byron, the great English poet, was born with club foot, and yet through his cosmic illumination, he achieved immortality. He was able to go to Greece when that country struggled desperately for its freedom from Turkish rule, and he gave his life in battle with the Greeks. Today, throughout history, Byron is honored with statues and memorials to his unconquerable spirit. Florence Nightingale ignored the limitations of her time, which decreed that women should remain in the kitchen and went out into the battlefields to nurse the wounded and dying. Through this sacrifice, she freed women for all time and raised the profession of nursing to new and greater dignity. George Washington Carver was born to slave parents and yet rose above the limitations of race and color to found Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. He once showed me little packets of flower seed that he put into every letter he wrote and which went all over the world to produce who wrote him. He said, I send these seeds out with thoughts of love. Whoever sees them bloom must reflect the love and beauty of the flowers. One cannot hate his fellow men when he loves nature. Edison and Beethoven both became deaf, and yet they were able to rise above this limitation and achieve greatness in their fields. Milton was blind, but his paradise lost and regained 
have won him a high place with the immortals of all time. The unlimited fourth dimension spirit. The list is endless of those great men and women who rose on the wings of the soul through cosmic consciousness to achieve immortality. They rose into the unlimited fourth dimension of spirit and tapped the metaphysical power plane which gave them supernormal ability. You possess this same ability that these great ones have had for tapping the higher dimensions of mind and spirit. Now, let us learn how to utilize the three planes of consciousness we have learned about. The conscious mind, storehouse of human memory. The conscious mind is the dimension of ordinary everyday activity. It is here that all awareness begins. Most people live 24 hours a day on this plane of consciousness. This plane is important for it concerns such things as food, clothing, shelter, jobs, and money, friends, physical love, and creature comforts. There is nothing wrong with living on the plane of consciousness, for without it there could be no physical or material existence. The only mistake some people make is they live entirely on this plane and their lives become warped and unbalanced. I once knew a woman who was worth $25 million. Her husband had died and left her this vast fortune. She was living entirely on the physical plane of consciousness. She started going to nightclubs and drinking excessively. She frequented gambling houses and horse races and lost thousands of dollars. She began taking sleeping pills and pep pills and soon her brain centers became confused and disoriented. Finally, the unfortunate woman committed suicide. She had everything to live for, but life became unbearable because she had never unlocked the other planes of consciousness which might have saved her. Regime for living on the conscious mind plane. A. Develop awareness of what your conscious mind is. It is your volitional mind which makes your decisions and carries them out. Be aware of your body, its sensations, its appetites. Sit for five minutes a day when you get up in the morning and be aware of your physical self, your emotions, your inner and outer sensations. Be aware of your hands and the power they possess for creativity. If you paint or type or play a musical instrument, stop and analyze the amazing dexterity of your hands as they perform some task and be aware of the power you possess to do a variety of astounding things. The ability to use your hands raises you above the level of the animals. Be aware of this power and every day give time and attention to your body's needs. The right food, good fresh air, exercise, rest, and sleep to restore the body. Fix your mind on your objective in life. Let this also be a daily five-minute exercise, preferably when you awaken and your mind is fresh. Consciously ask yourself, what is my life goal? What am I doing to achieve it? What can I do today to further this life goal? What am I doing that might be harmful and injurious to myself and my interests? You can also do this exercise at odd moments while waiting for a bus or when you are having your lunch at work. This keeps the conscious mind constantly focused on your true life goal and keeps you from getting confused as to your life objective. C. Cultivate affirmative power consciously. The conscious mind and its memory patterns are motivated by conscious volition. You can color the fiber of your mind with either negative or positive suggestions. People constantly tear down the positive habit patterns of their brains with such negative statements as, I can't, I'm afraid I'll fail. I know I won't be able to do it. 
I'm unlucky. I was born to lose. I once met a man who had tattooed on his right arm the words born to lose. He began to tell me a story of defeats, disappointments, failures, and frustrations. That was truly awesome. Early in his life, his father had deserted the family, and he had never known security as a child. His mother took to drink. He ran away from home at an early age, and soon he was also drinking excessively. He went from job to job, and finally as a seaman. When he was drunk one night, he had the words born to lose tattooed on his arm. From that time on, his bad luck increased, and he wound up by telling me that he was doomed by fate from the moment he was born to an existence of misery and poverty. Unfortunately, my acquaintanceship with him did not extend beyond the moment, so I could not show him that his own conscious, volitional mind was the cause of all his misery and bad luck. Affirmative power is cultivated by giving yourself conscious suggestions which lodge in the miracle response centers of your mind and produce the equivalence of that which you affirm. Change your statements of I can't to I can. Change I won't to I will. Begin to think affirmatively. I can be healthy, strong, youthful, and radiant. I will succeed in my work. I shall attract money enough to meet all my needs. People will like me and be friendly with me. I attract only that which is good. Soon, you will begin to form mental habit patterns. By using these affirmative statements that are positive, that will shape your life in the image of what you most frequently think. D. Develop conscious control of your brain centers. Concentrate for a few moments each day on your five centers of touch, feeling, taste, sound, and sight. Be aware of the physical world around you through these five senses. Soon you will store vibrant, live, emotional experience in the memory patterns of your brain, which will help shape your entire future destiny. E. Learn three new words every day to exercise your memory centers. You can vary this by learning poems, biblical quotations, or some other positive statements that will help you fix images within your brain. F. Practice memory recall of past scenes and events. Be sure to recall only those memories which are pleasant and positive. Most people recall operations, sicknesses, disasters, and failures. And each time that they recall such negative memories, they are imprinting them more indelibly upon the sensitive convolutions of the mind. G. At least once a week for a full half hour or more. Be conscious of your memory. Write down a list of words and see what associations come to you from the past. Such words as home, mother, love, baby, country, flag, office, people, ocean, glory, happiness, beauty, good, and friends might form such a list. You can make up your own. Then write down all the words or thoughts that your mind recalls. You may unlock some valuable vein of memory which will lead you to some great accomplishment in your present life. The subconscious storehouse of racial human memory. The subconscious mind has often been confused with superconscious or cosmic mind by students of metaphysics. It is true that tremendous power resides within your subconscious mind and that you can use it to great advantage by knowing how to release its stored up power. The subconscious is where all the racial memories are stored. When nature wants to create another human being, she releases the pattern which is held in the racial memory of all human beings. This is stored in the subconscious mind. The subconscious knows how to form that child 
in the mother's womb perfectly in nine short months time the chemical formula is within the mother's genes and cells of her brain and body the cosmic mind which we shall study shortly holds the secret pattern for all creation but it is the subconscious mind which is the tool within man that nature uses for evolving that pattern the subconscious might be called the second dimension of life experience it is the automatic mind that motivates all living creatures causing them to perform their life functions through instinct when you want to achieve something great you consciously choose your objective then by stimulating the subconscious mind you set into motion the higher forces which create that image you hold in your consciousness the master Jesus who knew how to unlock this tremendous power of the subconscious mind for healing spoke of this power as the father within who doeth the work again he said the father and I are one in our modern study of metaphysics we know that the subconscious mind within man can make him sick or keep him healthy let us learn how to tap this dimension of the subconscious mind a Emil Kui first discovered the tremendous power that existed in the subconscious mind for healing the sick use the system he taught for giving your subconscious mind the right positive auto suggestions it needs when you go to bed at night repeat over and over the suggestion you want to incorporate in your subconscious mind you may use the following or make up your own I desire a better memory so I can recall anything from the past that I choose I wish to change my personality so that I will be more magnetic compelling and attractive I would like to attract a better job where I can use my creative gifts and talents to best advantage I need $1,000 to accomplish my present objective I want to attract this money from unexpected sources I wish to find a home that I can afford it is to be located in the country and will have a small garden and five rooms I would like to play the piano or sing or type or write stories or songs whatever creative gift you desire ask for it I want better health more energy and vitality and a healing of the condition that I now have it is important that you be specific when you command the forces of your subconscious mind you can say your auto suggestion aloud or to yourself as you lie in bed preparing to go to sleep say each auto suggestion over at least 10 times and repeat this process every night and every morning for the rest of your life the habit patterns of your subconscious must be built in about three months time if you consciously do this exercise and soon you will be able to command the power at will and it will sometimes work instantaneous miracles for you B write some of your auto suggestions down on small cards that you can carry in your purse or pocket and several times a day look at them and repeat them these can be suggestions for specific things you desire or they may be pep statements such as I feel wonderful everything I do today will be successful I radiate love to everyone I meet I am life I am youth I am love I charge my mind with power I have faith that only good will seek me out I am a dynamic center of cosmic light peace and beauty and become a magnet for all good see read memorize and absorb positive knowledge from self-help books to keep you constantly charged mentally in a positive way avoid reading destructive and negative books and magazines that deal with horror sadism and degeneracy choose programs on television and movies that are inspiring uplifting and constructive avoid those programs that dwell too much on bloodshed violence and disaster e charge the batteries of your brain by giving yourself tasks to perform that are creative and positive example when a magnet loses its power to attract 
to itself iron filings. It is given work to do by placing a piece of iron on it until it is once again charged. You can use this same process to charge your brain by associating your mind with some uplifting and inspiring thought. You can automatically charge its electrical and magnetic power. The emotions and thoughts which help charge the subconscious quickest are a desire to unselfishly help others, a love of people, and a desire to do something good for them. The emotion of love manifested on any of its various planes, love of family, love of humanity, love of friends, love of country, love of God, forgiveness. Of those who have harmed you in any way, Example, a woman who suffered from crippling arthritis for 20 years finally confessed that she hated her sister all those years for taking her boyfriend away from her and marrying him. She had remained a spinster all those years hating her sister. When she was told to forgive the sister and send her loving thoughts, she changed the mental charge of her subconscious mind from hate to love and within six months her arthritis disappeared. F. At night, when you retire, give your subconscious mind a list of the things you want it to do for you. The subconscious may send through the thought for making a million dollars while you sleep as it did to Edison when he invented the electric light bulb. He had been trying for weeks to invent a filament that wouldn't burn out immediately. Everything he tried failed. Finally, he gave his subconscious mind instructions that he wanted a filament that would last for many hours. One night he awakened as if someone had nudged him and he hastily wrote down the idea that came through. The next day he hastened to work out the details of the idea and the electric light was born. The Cosmic Mind Storehouse of Cosmic Memory The third dimension of mind is that mind which seems to be above the physical and material universe, and which in metaphysics we call the cosmic mind. It is within the cosmic mind that all universal consciousness exists. When you once learn how to tap this vast repository of universal memory, you may consort with the immortals of all ages and share their thoughts, emotions, and creative genius. Let us now study the method by which you may tap the cosmic mind and enjoy unlimited freedom of movement in the vast universal realms of great art, music, literature, poetry, and philosophy. A. Study the lives of the great geniuses of history and mentally take on the luster of their minds and the greatness of their profound thoughts. For example, choose Burbank and from him take the essence of his creative genius. This was made up of curiosity about the workings of nature, patience in his many experiments with growing plants, faith in the inherent miracle of all life that infuses all living things, vision, the ability to see new forms and create them through imagination, courage to be able to continue in the face of numerous failures and obstructions. You can see how you can borrow cosmic greatness from a genius like Burbank by knowing his life and his work and then emulating the pattern of greatness established by him. From Carnegie you can emulate the qualities of imagination, persistence, desire for a better life, unselfishness which caused him to give to America 1200 public libraries and the great cultural institution Carnegie Hall. From Edison, you can emulate the cosmic qualities of a desire to do good for others, faith in the miracle power that worked through him, joy in creativity, a love for humanity, a desire to change the world for the better, patience, perseverance, hope, and optimism. From Beethoven and Mozart, you may emulate the cosmic qualities of beauty, harmony, joy, and rhythm. Also their creative patterns of hard work, diligence, patience, and love of humanity. This process of studying the lives of the great can be extended to every realm of human endeavor 
from philosophy and science to art, music, literature, and invention. Mentally hold a conference with great men whose thoughts and works have enriched the world. Example, you might have a business problem with which you do not know how to work out. Call upon the cosmic knowledge used by Vanderbilt, Morgan, Carnegie, Schwab, and other business geniuses. The same thoughts which motivated them when they lived are still in existence today on the cosmic plane of consciousness, and you may tap this plane as easily and readily as these men did. You may wish the inspiration of great music turn to recordings of such geniuses as Beethoven, Mozart, Handel, Bach, and Strauss. And when listening to their living music, you can recreate the inspiration and emotional beauty that caused them to create their vibrant masterpieces. You may require the transcendental wisdom and beauty of words which were created by such great men as Shelley, Keats, Milton, Dante, Shakespeare, and Hugo. Turn to the works of these or other great authors and rekindle once again the cosmic flame which burned brightly for them and which through them inspired the entire human race. You may require the cosmic knowledge of a man of science for some specific task in your life. Turn to the lives and works of such men as Newton, Galileo, Da Vinci, Pasteur, Einstein, Salk, and Fleming. The same cosmic inspiration that motivated them can, through their works, enkindle your brain and imagination with the same creative fire they used and cause you to create works of greatness. C. Have a high and noble purpose for living and you will reach out to the cosmic mind and draw inspiration and help for every action in your life. Hetty Green made over a Hetty Green made over a hundred million dollars in her lifetime, but her greed and selfishness was such that she became a miser and never knew the joy and excitement that comes from sharing your money with other people. You can tap cosmic mind power by having an unselfish desire to help the world become a better place in which to live. Nobel made his fortune through munitions and gunpowder but he left his fortune in trust for the Nobel Peace Prize to be given every year to the man who does the most for peace as well as for literary greatness. Carnegie once said that in the future it will be considered sinful for a man to die rich. He left most of his fortune to foundations for the good of humanity. Rockefeller Sr. has been criticized by many for the methods he used to accumulate the early fortunes he made. However, after his death he left the money to the Rockefeller Foundation which has discovered some of the great advances made in science and medicine which can help all of humanity. Andrew Mellon endowed a vast art gallery so he could share his love of beauty with the world. The fourth dimensional plane of spirit. When you have explored all three planes of consciousness, the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the cosmic mind, you have at your control all of the vast forces which man may tap and use for physical, material, mental, emotional, and psychic needs. There is still one other plane to be explored. This is the fourth dimensional plane of pure spirit or essence, which flows in through and around the physical and material, giving its form and substance, but never being imprisoned by matter. Einstein was working on a theory before he died, which explained all matter, all creation in terms of this divine essence or spirit. In religion, this essence is called the Holy Ghost. But in metaphysics, we know that the power which Jesus, the healer, used, and which all the great mystics have used to perform miracles of healing and other great creative actions, was on the fourth dimensional metaphysical plane in other words, the plane that is above and beyond the physical and material universe. Great forces alive in the invisible. There are great forces alive in the invisible fourth dimensional plane. It is there that electricity ebbs and flows in a vast tidal wave of power. When Franklin tried his experiment with a kite and later he proved 
that this stupendous cosmic power existed. Later, Galvani, Marconi, Edison, and other creative geniuses harnessed these tidal waves of power that exist in the invisible dimensions of time and space. Magnetism is another of these vast cosmic forces, which man is only now beginning to learn how to use. Newton and Galileo both showed mankind that this mysterious, fluidic substance ebbed and flowed throughout the creative universe and could be used by mankind when he once understood it. Now our spaceships are probing interstellar space because we have learned how magnetism works through gravitational force or third law of motion which Newton discovered. Capillary attraction in all growing living things is another one of these mysterious invisible forces which is motivated by the divine essence behind all creation. When you once learn how to tap this universal reservoir of invisible power, you can truly become a superman and perform deeds that would be called miracles by all who witness them. Jesus knew how to transmute substances, how to heal the sick, how to feed the multitudes with a few loaves and fishes, how to walk on water, raise the dead, turn water into wine, and perform other incredible miracles through the use of the law of transmutation and transfiguration. All of this has been documented in history. How to tap the fourth dimensional plane of spirit. A. Use the two miracle keys of faith and prayer to unlock the vast reservoirs of latent power within your human psyche. Have faith that this power is alive today and is working for you as it did for Jesus and other great teachers of the past. Use prayer as the spiritual language with which you can communicate to the divine mind within your own consciousness. The spark of divinity is alive within all human beings. You can talk to God as easily as you talk to your friends. Prayer is the language of the soul, and when you hold holy communion with your divine self, you will be admitted into many mysteries of the universe, and you will be given powers that will astound you. B. Intensify your spiritual magnetism by holding in your consciousness the spiritual qualities that all great mystics have told us about. These qualities are truth, love, peace, charity, goodness, forgiveness, faith, and worship of the divine force, which created all life. These qualities of the divine should be indulged and exercised as much as you exercise your physical body. The mind, the emotions, and the soul of man require certain stimuli, and on the fourth dimensional plane, man must live in the awareness of his divinity and act accordingly. Base and ignoble actions destroy the divine image, and man sinks back to the primitive plane of an animal. C. Master the negative emotions which destroy the divine image. These emotions we have learned elsewhere in our study. They are fear, hatred, anger, revenge, envy, jealousy, greed, selfishness, and malice. The only way that you can really master those emotions is through substitution of a positive emotion in place of the negative one. D. When you wish to stir the miracle response setters of your consciousness, use the secret that the Tibetan mystics have used for centuries. Visualize a golden cord tied to the forehead. See this golden cord reaching out into infinity, where it contacts the cosmic mind of the Creator. When you practice projecting your spiritual essence to the Divine, breathe deeply 10 or 15 times and then close your eyes and visualize the divine essence flowing from cosmic mind to your mind. Slowly say the mystic words, Om Mane Padme Om, 10 or 15 times. Breathe deeply 
before saying the words and then hold the om a little longer than the other words. You will feel a sensation of exhilaration when you perform this mystic ritual and it will give you great power and endurance when you need it. You can tap this high plane of the fourth dimension of spirit when you perform charitable acts. This is one of the reasons why all the great mystics and prophets stress charity in their teachings. The spirit of outpouring is a divine act. As the sun pours forth its rays to nourish the earth and to give life to all mankind. The cosmic mind is a generous and loving force that bestows its treasures lavishly on mankind. Duplicate this generosity of the divine mind in your own life and you will see immediate changes in your own life affairs. Being charitable does not mean that you must give money to others. Giving takes many different forms. You can give kindness, love, beauty. You can share your life experiences with those less fortunate. You can give smiles and kind words to those with whom you work. The spirit of kindness and generosity can become a mental habit which infuses your entire personality. It will win friends for you and cause you to be loved by everyone you meet. I really enjoyed this very simple teaching by Anthony Norvell, and I thought that you would enjoy it too. All of the examples that he gives are incredibly motivational and really enhance the mind and the way you think about it. Now, he's not talking about fourth dimension like we do when we talk about 5D or fourth density. He's just saying that there's this other place, this other place that we access in spirit that provides and that dimension is what he's using in this particular chapter. Check out my meditation, The Quantum Mastermind, which uses the technique he gives here where you have people that you need. If you're brainstorming about a scientific project, bring a scientist into your imagination. He talks about effectively using auto-suggestion to influence your subconscious mind, which is incredibly powerful. The bottom idea, the examples that he gives on multiple occasions of people grasping at this unknown power that you can call fourth dimensional but in another place is very motivational and profound. Have you accessed this dimensional power source, this other place? Then please write about it in the comments. I would love to hear it. I love these old chapters where they would break it down and give examples and it reminds me of Neville Goddard as well. So let me know what you think, and I can certainly read more of Anthony Norvell's writings. Uh, I really enjoy them, as I do all of these authors. They come to me, and they beg me to read their stuff. So I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm sending love to everyone out there. And welcome to the Reality Revolution.